What the f All right, well, I just caught on the camera. I just had this, another DTS convertible delivered. This is kind of a unique situation because this is a Hurricane Ian car. This car is from Copart, but I did not buy it at Copart. My friend George bought this car back in November from Copart. Again, Hurricane Ian flood car. Let me zoom this out so we get a better look at her. As you all know by now, I bought one of these in January, except I bought the next generation DTS. This one is my preferred generation, 2000 to 2005. My other one's a 2006, but you may also recognize this and that my friend Anthony has one of these and it's here at my property. His is a 2004, same deal, Coach Builders Limited, custom four-door convertible. So my friend George, as I mentioned, bought this car in November and because he's way up in Massachusetts and like me has a lot of personal cars that he doesn't have room for, he had kept it at a friend's house in Florida temporarily, way up in Daytona Beach. And well, all of a sudden out of the blue, that friend uh, ended up selling his house and didn't really give George any notice of the fact, kind of last minute told him and George didn't know where to send this car or with the time to have it picked up and brought all the way up to Massachusetts even if he did have somewhere to put it. So George knows I like these cars and knows that I'll rescue just about anything. So he called me and asked me if I wanted to buy it. And he actually took a loss in this car. He was in it for like 1500 bucks and I paid 750. Thank you, George, for taking that gracious hit on this vehicle and allowing me to uh, have a chance at bringing it back to life. Now, George doesn't really know anything about this. So it kind of is sight unseen. His friend that had it at his house was not very mechanically inclined. Tried checking out a few things for George, but even still, uh, we really don't know anything about this car, George or I. It just got dropped off here. I helped push in the driveway and that's about it. And I opened up the door and started looking inside. And I said, geez, I should probably be filming my initial reaction at what I just purchased. Now I did have the car delivered because it was way up in Daytona Beach area and I just don't have time to drive up there. so. Uh, with delivery, I'm into it for about a thousand bucks. Will it be a better purchase than my 06 DTS, which you'll notice they're both red with a tan top and a tan interior and chrome wheels. Although I have to say, I already prefer the look of this car. And some of you might think I'm crazy, but you guys know I've got weird taste. I mean, look, a Cavalier convertible, a rendezvous, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a pretty agreeable one there, the Escalade, but I have weird taste. I really prefer not only the look of this 2000 to 2005 Sedan DeVille, or in this case, DTS. I also prefer the build quality. I think these cars feel a lot better built than the next generation cars. That was that bailout era of GM. Although this does have the, uh, as Anthony likes to call it, the goofy roll bar. Uh, this is uh, the era of coach builders before they, I guess, figured out, or maybe they just weren't doing it for everybody, how to keep this car structurally sound w without having this giant B pillar still in the car, kind of looking like a roll bar. And of course, it also involves keeping this part of the door. In my 06, and that's what's better about my 06, they did custom window regulators, you lose these, and you also don't have that B pillar. So let's take a look. Now, again, I had the door open over there. I haven't done like a smell test yet. It actually doesn't smell that bad. Uh, I don't know what extent that George's friend went into cleaning this. I will say it's pretty evident that the water in this was really high. Uh, I think it was even higher than my other one. In some ways, it doesn't really show, but look at all that kind of salty residue and corrosion up here in the dashboard the water ah it might have been about the same actually because in my in my other car it was about a quarter way up the cluster and you can see there's actually sand inside the cluster <laughs> so i like this sticky note i take probably from george's friend it's not in park 
In terms of the interior, I really don't care because these interiors are a dime a dozen. There's a million of these cars in the junkyard. I'll have no issue replacing this interior. I actually have a parts car here that's really for Anthony's coach builders convertible, but Anthony doesn't really want to use it because it was a flood car, the parts car. I kind of talked him into buying that car because to me it's in really nice shape, but the interior was still underwater. So maybe if he doesn't want to use that one, I'll use it. You can see we've got a spare tire that's blown out here. That's interesting. I don't know if that came from this car or, or what. There's also, it looks like maybe an Eldorado wheel and tire back here. So nice. Uh, George, I hate to tell you, but whatever was in the car is now mine. So I'll recoup some money on that right there. And you can see, you know, these cars have so much in common compared to my other one. They both have a tear in the driver's seat and the perforated leather. Now this car has got the center console, which I love to see. I mean, there's even sand. <laughs> Jeez. So basically, like my 06, this whole interior just needs to go in the trash. Oh man, so he didn't really clean this thing at all, uh, his friend, which is fine. I just wasn't sure if he uh, went to any sort of extent to try to clean it. There's actually still water in the center console. And nice, somebody's pedicure, a uh, little foam thing there. The top, I will say, and George told me that his friend had confirmed this because my friend George never actually saw this car in person. Uh, the top is in excellent condition. It's an even better condition than the top on my 06. And these chrome wheels are in great shape. They haven't started pitting. Continental tires with great tread. The paintwork looks to be in great shape. I noticed it's got a Massachusetts plate on it. I guess it was meant to be. Must have been a Snowbirds car. My other one was from Ohio, had an Ohio plate on it. You can see here DeVoe Cadillac, Naples. That's where this car is out of. That's where this car uh, took a swim. Now I noticed the rear suspension is sitting a bit low. This has the auto leveling suspension. So maybe there's a bunch of water in the trunk and that's why it's uh, it's low like that. Maybe it's the water and the fact that there's two tires in the back seat. You know, I think that George's friend was trying to do some stuff to this car for George because you can see a lot of it's taken apart. The dash pad's loose. Uh, we got the A-pillar trim here off, the trim around the cluster, whole bunch of stuff taken off, which is fine because I got to take all this out anyway. And here's the key. Oh boy. Oh, okay, there's two keys. There's one the ignition, and this is the, uh, the valet key with the clicker. Let's see, 2004. Okay, this is an 04 as well. So same year as Anthony's, except I would say better, because Anthony's is a uh, is old man beige. Headlights look to be in great shape. This car was definitely garaged before its uh, unfortunate situation. And you have the heritage of ownership badge, albeit in kind of bad shape, but... Still cool to see that. You don't see those nearly as often on these newer Cadillacs. So let me go ahead and, oh, hood's already popped. Wow, it's really clean. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Again, I don't know George's friend cleaned it at all, but it definitely looks really clean. Let's take a look at the oil. I don't even know if he tried, if he changed the oil or anything like that. Um, it looks pretty clean. You could definitely see some crud there on the dipstick. So that's really clean oil though. So I'm not sure if he changed it. I doubt he pulled the spark plugs and all that. Um, but who knows? Let's see. Well, actually this beauty cover is loose. That's in really nice shape. So I don't want to scratch that up. A lot of times the paint will come off of those beauty covers from the heat. Yeah, it looks like this engine was also just like my 06, completely underwater. You can see kind of a water line there. So those little pieces of dirt and debris just stuck on here. So another one that was totally underwater. I may be doing two cradle drops now. And some of you might still think that I'm crazy. From what I can see, it looks pretty clean down on the valve cover, but it doesn't really mean anything uh, just from that one little glance. So some of you might still think I'm crazy for doing all this work to just a 2004 Cadillac DTS. So I'll just tell you real quick in case you didn't see the first video. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say a coach builder's car, there's a company called Coach Builders Limited, been around for, God, probably getting close to 40 years, maybe even longer. George will 
be down in the comments telling everybody the exact information. George is an expert in these cars. He buys a lot of Coach Builders cars, mostly Eldorados. He's like the Eldorado guy. Anthony's the Brome guy. And I'm just the front wheel drive guy. So Coach Builders Limited would either do it for dealers or you could bring your car to them. And it was not cheap. It was like 30,000 bucks on top of the price of the car. But they would convert what would normally only be a four door sedan or an Eldorado that only was ever offered in coupe form, like a 99 Eldorado, for example. And they would convert it into a convertible. And because it's not a body on frame car, it's unibody. They reinforce it with square tubing. The car, you can see right there. Okay, I don't know where I left off. I just got off the phone with Anthony. was giving him the scoop on this car. Wanted to see how bad George screwed me. I said, not too bad. Check a few more things quick. All right, there's our uh, air filter. Definitely... Uh, Got wet, not surprised at all. You can see the sand down at the bottom of the box. Get all things I expected to see. <laughs> kind of looks like it's got sand on it, but the fluid level is low. Guess I'd rather see that than it being overfilled because it's full of water. Cool, it looks good. All that's gonna be changed anyway. I don't know why I'm bothering to check. Let's um, let's open the trunk. Curious to see what's going on in there. Okay, I see what happened here. So no wonder the trunk, no wonder the rear end of this thing is sagging down. Uh, George's friend who sold his house literally had to be out of there today and the car got picked up last night, uh, graced me with a bunch of junk and just threw it in the trunk of this car that he didn't want to keep. But some of this stuff is nice, nice Craftsman jack stands. Okay, so I've got the DTS coach car up in the air somewhat. I wanted to be able to get underneath it and get it as clean as possible. And I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised as to how clean this thing is, considering it was completely underwater and salt water. Look at the exhaust, look at everything really. A lot cleaner, at least underneath, than my 06 is. So what I'm gonna do right now, well, I've got the car up, and yes, I will put some jack stands. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil, and let's see what comes out. I still can't get over how clean this car is after all this time being covered in salt water. Ugh, most of them don't look this way after several months. Let's see what comes out of here. Usually you'll get the water drips before the plug even comes out, if there is any water. Eh, nothing yet. Oh, I see water. <laughs> That's what I meant. Water drips first. We'll see just how much water is in this engine. Hopefully it's not too much. Ooh boy, because all I have is this. My other pans are full. <laughs> That's a fair bit of water. I mean, I've definitely seen worse because now we're starting to get more oily already. There had to be at least a, a quart of water in there. And it's still, you know, it's oil, but it's not, the viscosity is still... That's pretty viscous, actually. Definitely seen worse. I've drained out, like my white Elante, I had to drain it like three times. Fill drain, fill drain, fill drain before I got anything that looked even close to this. So I think from here, we're just gonna be seeing oil coming out of here, so I won't waste your time making you watch this. Obviously, oil and water separates. The water came out first. All right, let me turn the camera off because it's starting to get full. Okay, I just broke the oil filter loose. Or so I thought. Things on there are pretty tight. Let's see if anything, if any water comes out of the filter. Whoa. And it looks like it's just oil coming out of the filter, so that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead, put another filter on the car, fill it up with some oil. Obviously, this will need at least a few more oil changes 
if I do even get it running. But I do want to put something in there, obviously, before I start trying to crank this thing over. Of course, before I even try to do that, my next step will be to pull the spark plugs and see if there's any water in the top end of the engine. So, see you there. So, I've got the top unlatched right now. And I'm down here in the trunk. You can see there's a literal beach of sand on the floor back here. And you can put direct power to the motor. So let's see what it does. I'm not super optimistic. Holy crap. <laughs> wow, that's a hell of a motor to survive being completely under salt water. Oh, hold on. Whoa. I thought I had the trunk closed enough, but that's perfect right there. I just wanted to get this top open and air this thing out a little bit more. It's pretty awesome that that still works. I'm gonna go ahead and start dismantling, as I said before, the intake. I wanna make sure that no water got down in there. And also I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ignition coils and the spark plugs. Okay, so I'm not even a couple minutes in and I'm seeing a similar sight that I saw with the 06. I can't say I'm too surprised based on the water level both of these cars water line whatever you want to call it <sighs> looking down into the this intake tubing here obviously you can see it's a beach it's a sandbar it's a beach party and the bigger question is and this was not my doing but what the hell happened to half of the throttle blade it, it just broke right off did someone try to actuate the throttle and it was so seized that it broke that would be my only guess but Half of the throttle blade is missing. I can't imagine that the flood did that. You would need some real force to be able to do that. You can see clearly that water and sand and all kinds of goodness went down into the intake. I imagine we'll see a similar sight as I saw with the 06. Okay, I've got the intake pulled and it's exactly the same scene. Maybe not quite as bad, but pretty darn close to the 06 DTS, you can see. Plenty of standing water here in the valley of the intake. And obviously the starter has seen some water as well. This was all underwater, of course. Look down into the intake valves. You can see standing water on top of the valves. They've all got some rust on top of the valves. So it appears that just these two valves right here, the only ones that have standing water on top, which probably means that all these cylinders with the intake valves slightly open or completely open are full of water, if I had to guess. We'll see if I can blow those cylinders out with some compressed air. And then after I do that, I'll dump some Marvel Mystery Oil down into those valves and into those cylinders and see if I can turn this engine by hand. Now the intake, I can tell, is full of water. It's, uh, it's pretty heavy, way heavier than it should be for a plastic intake. Just can already see the water. <laughs> Same story as my 06, to a T. You can actually see the water line. Oh, isn't that lovely? Again, can't say I'm too surprised. These two cars must have been in the same parking garage or the exact same area of Naples when Hurricane Ian hit because they have the exact same amount of water, same water line, same exact water in everything. I guess I'll throw this in the pile with the other flooded intake. This being off the 06. This is my pile of stuff from the 06. I'm not sure what I'm gonna end up reusing, what's gonna get tossed. What do you think, Tag Along? She thinks I'm crazy. So let me go ahead and get all that cleaned up, blown out. I'm gonna pull the plugs as well and the ignition coils. And like I said, we'll see if I'm able to turn this thing over. If not, I'm gonna fill it with Marvel Mystery Oil and put it aside, let it soak up for at least a few days and then try again. Okay, so I have all the ignition coils out. What a headache that was. They were very stuck. One of them actually broke into multiple pieces to get it out, but they are all out now. And I just pulled out this plug here, and you can see that's water dripping off of the plug. But you can see just how 
nasty and gunked up it is down in these spark plug wells, which explains why the ignition coils were stuck. And again, just shows how much water got into this engine and all over this engine. I, I vacuumed out all the standing water here in the valley of the intake. I imagine the story will be similar with all the other plugs. They're going to have water on them. I imagine that the cylinders are going to have water in them. I think based on what I'm seeing, I'm just going to go ahead and pour Marvel Mystery Oil in and leave it until at least tomorrow before I even try to spin this thing over by hand. Okay, so I haven't filmed much because I've been going at this a little bit every day after work, and I try to get as much done as I can in that little window of opportunity. So what I've done, and I believe I already showed that obviously I took the intake off, I have as thoroughly as possible without disassembling this, this engine, cleaned out the spark plug wells and the cylinders and the intake valves of any sand and water. Uh, there was some standing water, for example, in this cylinder, I was able to extract it all uh, between blowing compressed air and a vacuum cleaner. There was so much sand compressed into these two wells on the back side of the engine that I had to go around with a butter knife and kind of dig the sand out around the spark plug. It was so compressed in that my vacuum, my five horsepower shop vac, my compressed air wouldn't get it out. And so that finally was allowed me to expose the nut on the spark plug enough. You can see just how nasty these things are, but to be able to get them out. I've also filled all the intake valves and all the cylinders with transmission fluid to help lubricate as I attempt to turn this thing over by hand. Now, some of these intake valves were already open, but the ones that were closed, just like on the 06, I filled up those with transmission fluid because there is some surface rust. So again, all the cylinders are filled up with transmission fluid, the intake valves. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the vehicle, remove this passenger side wheel. And I'm gonna try to turn this thing over by hand. Let's hope we have better luck than I did with the 06, which was locked up solid. I don't have too much optimism, but I gotta try it. So let me get the wheel off and we'll see if she spins. Nice, well it looks like this had a rotor put on recently, although it may need another one. <laughs> I'll probably clean up. I just got the access panel off, uh, or the wheel liner, whatever you want to call it. You can see all the remnants of the flood up in here. So let's do what we came to do. Now, if I end up not getting it this time, I'll probably take off the, I'll take off the serpentine belt because you never know an accessory could be stuck. Not looking too good. But again, the AC compressor could be locked up, preventing this from turning since they're still on the belt. Oh. I can actually see myself moving the uh, engine, the motor mounts, you know, letting it move a little bit. Okay, so obviously there's a problem. Can't say I'm terribly surprised. Let me uh, get that serpentine belt off. We'll just make sure it's not a seized accessory pulley and we'll try again. All right, so lo and behold, the alternator is seized. And so that certainly could be the reason that I wasn't able to get this to turn over. Cross your fingers. Yeah, like that's already, <laughs> I shouldn't have to push that hard. You know what I mean? If this wasn't locked up, it would, it would turn. <clears throat> oh, did it turn? turn I gotta check my video okay so i reviewed my footage it did seem i don't know if it's just a little bit of slack in the pulley that moved or if i actually did get it to break free a bit oh <laughs> no way look at oh. i'm not 
pushing that hard either because I'm, I don't know if you can see the angle of the breaker bar. I actually have it like this. So my leverage isn't even that good. You've got to be kidding me. This son of a gun might spin. And I tried like hell on the other car to no avail. Yes. I think she's going to do it. That gargling you hear is all the transmission fluid I've got in the cylinders. See if we can get a full rotation out of her. And maybe it'll start to spin easier. It's just my leverage, it's really bad. <laughs> I can't believe it. Holy crap. Doesn't mean we're home free with this engine, but certainly a better start than the 06. So anyways, let me not make you stare at me rotating this thing little by little. Let me work on her for a while and see if I can get it spinning nicely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think I pulled every muscle in my back everywhere, but check it out. She spins easy. And I've already had it do a full rotation at this point. It's just all the... Uh, ATF and the cylinders you hear, they're gargling. And then the intake valves. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. We've already done, or about to do, a full rotation. Now that I know that the engine spins free, I also removed the starter and I bench tested it. It's no good. Big surprise, it was completely under salt water. So until I get a parts car, which now I'm really motivated to get one because this is a lot closer to hopefully running and driving than the 06 is, at least I think. All right, let's see if anything happens. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised. <laughs> 